Hello everyone, in today's video we will be implementing a project where given an image you will be expected to find the objects and also the masks and the images of those particular objects separated. So we will be using Streamlit and PyTorch for this. So firstly we will import the basic libraries as Streamlit, CV2, image and one model that we are going to have a different file for but I'll be importing right now. I'm just going to say from run model uh, import run. So first I'll be setting the page config. I'll say st.pageconfig and layout is going to be white. Now I'll have to have a file uploader because the user is expected to upload a file. So I'll say fl equal to st.file uploader upload an image. So let's say if fl is not none, that is the user has uploaded something. I'm going to set see whether that something is an image or not. So I'm going to say if, if image not in fl.type, I'll issue a warning saying st.warning only images please. Else, if the image is there, I'm, I'm going to read that particular image. I'm going to print that particular image. And with a st.spinner, I'm going to say model is running. Inside that, I'll be giving a particular function that I have imported from the top, if you remember, from run model. So I'm going to say object, dot, object comma segments is equals to run dot fl dot run in bracket, you're going to say fl dot name. So this run function is something that I have to uh, code. After that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say calls equal to, I'm going to set some columns. How many columns? That is dependent on the number of objects that we get. So we're going to say st.columns len of number of objects. Then for every column that we have, I'm going to say for i comma call in enumerate calls, I'm going to write the name of the object and also I'm going to display that particular segment, whatever we have got. So I'm going to say call.image segments of i channels equal to bgr because we will be getting a cv2 image. So now we are ready to implement the run function. I'll be importing the basic libraries, torch, torch vision, transforms, OS, numpy, cv2 and image. Then finally we are going to def, we are going to write def run image name. So whatever the image name that we had gotten from the previous file. And then we are going to say model equal to torch vision dot models dot segmentation dot deep lab v3 so this is going to be our uh, neural network that we will be using for this the project is something called as the se semantic segmentation and for this particular project we are going to use the deep v, uh, deep lab v3 uh, deep lab algorithm and the backbone is going to be resnet 50 and you have to write weights equal to default after that we will set the model in an evaluation mode by writing model dot eval and we have to set certain transform so transform equal to transforms.compose we are going to have transforms.2tensor then finally we are also going to have transforms.normalize where we will say mean equal to this and standard deviation equal to this so transform the two tensor is basically used to change the image from 0 to 255 which is generally an image from 20 to 1 so basically get the standard version and then we are going to normalize it by this mean and this standard deviation after that we are going to open the image with uh, PIL, open, uh, PIL open image and then we are going to do something like with torch.nograd which basically means that we don't require gradients for back propagation. I'm going to say pred equal to model transform of image and then increase the first dimension by writing none and um, three dots. So basically let's try to see what this pred is. So I'm going to print pred dot or rather let's say print type of pred. So basically this will give you a dictionary. Now, if this is a dictionary, it should have some keys. For that, you have to write pred or dot keys. So you can see there are two keys, out and auxiliary. In this case, we don't need an auxiliary. So we'll remove this and we'll be only using out. So I'm going to have pred of out and then I'm going to print it. So basically, you can see certain things over here. And these are certain numbers. If you print the shape, you are getting 1, 21, comma height, comma width. Now, height and width will basically depend on the image. But this 21 is going to be constant for all the images. And I'll explain you why. And then finally, you will have to squeeze this wheel because we need to remove the first dimension and then pass something on as argmax of zero. Now I'll explain why we have done argmax of zero. So as you can see over here, there are certain matrices. There are four matrices as you can see over here. First one is green. Second one is dark yellow. The third one is blue and the fourth one is almost dark gray, almost ending to black. So these are the four expect uh, expect this to be 21 because you know there are 21 such uh, matrices and each matrix is of, of size height and width okay now here you can only see four but uh, in the program you had seen it was 21 okay so assume this is 21 i could only show four because of lack of space so what is this so basically each of this corresponds to 
a particular category. So first example, the first one, the green one, this is the zeroth index. This corresponds to the background. So whenever uh, this pix, uh, this anything in this pixel is the highest, I'll explain you in a second. Don't worry. This will be background. Then the second one is our aeroplane. Third one is bicycle. I'll be giving you the names in a second. We'll write it in the code. So like this, there are 21. The first is background and then 20 categories. These are taken from the Pascal VOC data set. Okay. So let's go to the second slide and see. So let's take the first top left pixel. Okay. So how we are going to implement it, I'm showing you. So there are four here, which means there are 21 in total. Okay. So we are taking the top left pixel from every matrix like this. Okay. And if what, what you do in the next one is you lay it down in, in form of a uh, list. So you can see these are the particular numbers. The green one is 0 0.17. The yellow one is 0. Point, or rather the orange one is 0 0.05. Then the blue uh, yeah, the blue one is 0 0.08, the gray one is 0 0.31, the purple one is 0 0.23, the light yellow is 0 0.03 and so on and so forth and the last one is dark green in 0 0.01. So what the argmax does is it basically finds what is the argument of the maximum. So as you can see the maximum is the third one that is 0 0.31. No, no other value are greater than none of the values are greater than 0 0.31 so this is the result of the arc max so for the first pixel if you remember we had only taken the top left first pixel of the images we have got the arc max to be 3 the max is 0 0.31 but the argument of the max is 3 so on the top left we will have 3 as you can see similarly you will do the same operation for all the pixels so let's say in this case now you have the second one okay the second uh, pixel that is the second one from the top left so let's say for that you got the argmax of 5. So you will be basically uh, writing all those argmaxes in a particular uh, matrix. So obviously for every 21 of this you will be getting only one value. So the final shape will be height and width. Okay. So now this is what remains. So 0 is for background. So wherever you have 0 it refers to background. Wherever you have 1 it refers to aeroplane and so on and so forth. Obviously in this particular matrix there are many but in general there will be only 1 or 2 or 3 max. Okay. Uh, it can be more but uh, generally you will have two three four that's it so let's go back to the code so out here if you see you print output you are going to see certain uh, values if you print the shape you are going to have the height and width of this and then finally if you print the unique values which is the most important part if you print output dot unique you are only going to get the four three or the four where zero is for background and all other numbers are corresponding to a particular index which we will see right now. So what are these other numbers except 0? So we will have another variable as names and then we are going to have certain uh, attributes. So first one is aeroplane, second one is bicycle, third one is bird and so on and so forth where the second last one is train and the last one is TV. So these are all the 20 classes that are there in the Pascal VOC data set. Okay. So let's say if you get a certain number, let's say you get 4. So the fourth one is boat. So this is how it happens. Okay. So now we are going to have two variables. We are going to implement all objects. We are going to in initialize it as an empty list. And then we are also going to have all segments. And also we are going to have an empty list for it. Now all objects is basically going to keep the names of all the objects that will be found in this particular output. And all the segments will be all the images with white background that we have found for all these objects. So now it's time to find the different segments. So I'll be opening a loop for i in range and we will be using the unique function of output dot unique that we had seen right now dot shape of zero. So we are having this many unique uh, objects, obviously minus one because we don't want the background to be there and let's first get the numbers. So we will say num equal to output dot unique i plus one. So i will be i plus one because zero it is obviously background. So we'll start with plus one. So the first one, whatever the number is, it will be saved in now. And then we are going to have, okay, what are, what is the object at this position? We are going to say all objects dot append names of num minus one. Why minus one? Because num is obviously from zero to, uh, uh, from one to this and num minus one will basically give you the object. Okay. Now we are going to have temp is equals to torch dot zeros like output. So whatever temp will be, it will have the same size as output. What was output size? It was 21 cross, oh, sorry, a uh, height, uh, height. Uh, cross width that was the output and uh, torch uh, zeros like which means all the values will be filled with zero okay then finally we will take the uh, temp and we will only convert those values that are corresponding to the num that is basically going to be the mask of the object so we are going to say temp of output double equal to num equal to 255 now, after that what we are going to do we are going to have a mask 
we are going to say mask is equal to basically temp dot numpy so we are converting that pytorch tensor to a numpy and then converting the type to uint 8 which is basically the image type lastly we are going to read the image in a cv2 format so we're going to say real equal to cv2 dot read and then pass the image name that we had gotten from the previous file lastly we will have the real where mask is not equal to 255 so wherever the background is there instead of having a black background we are going to have a white background that's why we are passing 255 comma 255 comma 255 lastly we will append all of these masks to our all segments dot append and then finally we will be having a copy of the real okay so we are going to say real dot copy Lastly, we will return all the objects and all the segments. So once you save this and run the first file that we had seen over there, you will be getting uh, basically what you need to do is you need to go to um, a command prompt and then go to the particular folder and write streamlet space run and whatever is the name of the file. In my case, it is main.py. So I'll run it. A browser will open, browser window will open and then this, this will be our, this will be our front end. So basically it here it says upload an image so we will upload an image let's let me give let me give it the doggo image that is very very famous on our platform so i'm going to give a doggo image it is expected that there are three objects there is the dog there is the bicycle and there is the car at the back so once you get the image over here you can basically see that the model is running the spinner is running so once the model has finished you can see over here the output so it says dog it says bicycle and it says a car and you can also see there are the uh, masks of this that we have gotten over here. So I hope you understood the video and bye.